Welcome to the Vigor Life Podcast, a source of inspiration, lessons, stories, skill sets, mindsets, and strategies to invigorate and expand all areas of your life. Let's go. What's going on? Coach Luca back here with the Vigor Life Podcast. We have picked up the frequency a little bit, um, mostly, well, because there's a lot to say. Uh, we're going to have a bunch more guests coming on, but but because like today's, uh, to, I would say today's podcast, we're also doing some... Uh, like shorter ones, and, and like I said, shorter shorter ones have a range too. They're not always as as uh, as snappy as five minutes. But um, what I wanted to talk about today, um, specifically to you, is this: you know, the importance. Um, I'm sure you heard of this before, but but it, but it's almost like when when you know I have a revelation of how important something is. I want to share it uh, and possibly create a a moment or a revelation or an insight for you at this point in time, you know, depending on what you're going through. Um, but it, but it is about, you know, we talked about environments and we'll, we'll, we'll kind of dig a little bit deeper into something called spheres of control. Um, but mo- this is mostly about people, um, you know, who you surround yourself with. And I'm, I'm not even going to go into, you know, you are the, the, even though this is probably one of the most, I would say, um, talked about things when you when it comes to you know who you surround yourself with you know you are the five people you surround yourself with um but truly analyzing and assessing uh you know creating awareness uh about the people around you okay and what i mean by that is look i'm going to start with this uh like victims or people that you know constantly i would create a frame or, or look through the lens of something being negative or it's happening to them. And in one of the last podcasts, what we, I talked about, you know, um, like life is happening to you versus life is happening, you know, uh, by you, you're creating it. And, you know, this would fall into that category. It's like life's happening to you. Uh, but being like massively aware of the people that you are around. Okay. Now, first of all, you have a lot of choice around that. And that's where in a, in, a, in a little bit, I'm going to talk about, you know, spheres of control, what you can control, what you can't control. But first of all, creating the awareness of the people around you. Okay. Now, a lot of times, you know, we don't necessarily think about our friends or our family. You know, we may think about like people that we aren't as close to, you know, like maybe a boss or a, a team, you know, a team member. And hopefully, hopefully you are to, you know, close to your, I would say, uh, to the people you work with and, and the people on your team and whatnot. But that's you, when I have conversations with coaching clients, uh, you know, fitness or business related, that's what gets brought up is usually somebody that's not, um, you know, I would say somebody that's not as close because you got to dig a little bit deeper to go like, hey, well, what about, you know, who who's your, you know, who are you living with? Your spouse, your, uh, you know, brother, sister, mother, right? Like, uh, like your really close friends to bring out this like, well, you know, now that I think about it, right, now that I become aware of it, wow, this person really is, you know, a, a source of stress in my life, meaning, you know, stressful. Stressful could be that every time you have an idea, every time every time you have uh, something, you know, that uh, positive happen, it's always like, oh, you know, that's whatever, that's lucky, you know, or I wish I had that or, uh, you know, there's always kind of like a negative remark or response or, or something like that associated with it, right? And truly becoming aware of, first of all, like, you know, throughout your day, throughout your week, like what happens is, guess what? You know, you're going to be around most of, the, most of the same people, right? And those people are influencing you in certain ways. I mean, sometimes it's just the energy. Like, hey, if I put you in a room of, and everybody's negative all the time, like that has a tendency to rub off on you uh, until, you know, until you come to a place where you're just like, man, so sure about your mission, your vision, your purpose, like who you are. Uh, you know, at this point in time, you put me in a room of five negative people, like it's two things gonna happen, right? I'm gonna start shifting their perspective or they're just gonna be pissed off with me and leave, which, you know, but the, you know, all jokes aside on this point is like your life is being massively influenced by who you're surrounding yourself with. Right. And, and certainly t- today, I don't want to talk about other parts of the environment, which is, you know, things like what do you read? What do you hear? What do you listen to? Um, but mostly people, because we are, like I said, we are tribal creatures. And uh, and we, even even though even though an, uh, an environment of people may not be the best for you as far as like you achieving your goals, changing your behaviors, becoming who you want to become. 
right? You'll stick with it because it's safe. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, uh, this is this is a powerful comment uh, or, that I read about, and I think it was the book Resilience. When in Nazi Germany, you know, they actually were interviewing some people uh, about like, hey, why do you, you know, why do you follow this regime? Why do you follow Nazism and so on and so forth? And and one person, his response was to be free from freedom. Um, and, you know, that to me, that was powerful because first of all, you know, freedom it is like, there's a, pri- there's a price to pay for freedom, your own personal freedom, meaning, hey, like you want to be free and, you know, uh, start your own business, right? With, and and the, th- the idea of what that means is, is, is obviously different for a lot of people, but it's like, hey, you got to work really, really hard. There's a ton of responsibility. There's a ton of work that you can't put on anybody else, but just on you, you know, whether you have a team, it's like, same thing, it's on you. Um, and, you know, that freedom is a lot of responsibility. Same thing with, with anything else. Uh, and I'll loop back around. Like if you take on projects, you commit to people, um, so on and so forth. And sometimes, you know, to be comfortable, to not have responsibility, right? You just follow something, or maybe you just hang out with a group that you kind of deep down inside know is not the best for you, but you know, you're free from freedom. It's like you let that group guide you because you're part of the tribe, you feel safe, you feel comfortable. Although it's not who you want to become, it's not what you want to do, right? And, and that's why step one is awareness, right? Step one is awareness and then going like, hey, like the awareness of who am I surrounding myself by? And number two, understanding that you have a choice, right? And just a couple of examples, just from my last like week, you know, and, and I like, I'm very, very grateful that I've created this once again, like this is, this is not chance. Um, you know, the relationships uh, that I've created over the last, you know, 10, 15 years, actually my whole life when I look at it uh, further back is, you know, uh, at a certain point in time, started to become very deliberate, like me deliberately surrounding myself with people I respect, love, trust, you know, um, that I wanted to be like in, in the areas that they were really great at. And so, you know, not, not even a week ago, I was in, uh, actually, I'm, I'm sorry, it was a week ago. I was uh, in Montana. I was in Montana with uh, Jen Jen Ferruja, Mike DeSani, Jay Jablonski, Nate Green. Um, and, you know, we went out there to, to do not only, uh, you know, Glacier National Park, which is breathtaking. I certainly highly recommend that you go there. Just Montana is, is amazing. Um, and I, I, I've never been there, so I wanted to go. You know, we, we rented out a lodge. We stayed in Missoula. Uh, we had a journey on psilocybin that was very eye-opening. Uh, we had some incredibly deep conversations. Um, we had some, you know, when, when you have relationships like that, when you have an environment like that where you trust people, and they challenge you and they say, hey, like, you know, I, I think that what you're doing here in, in your life is not great. You told me you wanted this, how, you know, these people or these steps or these behaviors don't help you get there, right? Like, that's a great thing. Like when you have people that you you, you trust, love and care about and they, they, they challenge you compassionately about it, that's amazing. So like just this past weekend, uh, a lot of us had a, a whole number of revelations over that weekend through conversations, through our experiences, through, through everything. Um, that was environment. Matter of fact, I would say that because I felt so, I would say, uh, safe with those people, but and, and at home, and yet at the same time, they're you know everybody's willing to have like these really tough conversations about their lives, their relationship, the business, like all these different things. Now you get to grow because they push you, they challenge you to be better, right? So even if even though there is, uh, I would say, uh, confrontation and crucial conversations, they're all with the goal of helping you become better, helping you become who you said you wanted to become, okay? And so that was an incredible experience and it kind of really brought light to like, man, how grateful am I to, to be surrounded by people like that, um, and, that and, and, and I do the same for them, right? So like I'm the pushing that or, or being there for them in a tough situation in the same way or saying like, hey, you told me that you wanted to achieve this, man, let's go, like what you're doing right now, that doesn't fall in line with that, right? So you... You want to be surrounded by by people like that. Um, and, you know, how important is that? And how important is it to build that? Because guess what? You know, it does take time from where you are right now to, you know, the people you want to be around. Hey, maybe there's quite a gap there. It'll take you, you know, years and whatnot. But the the reality is there's probably a ton of people in your network, in your uh, in your vicinity, you know, that, that you're already maybe interacting with 
there are those people. You know, that's the cool thing about it. Once you get to know people, once you ask questions, you open yourself up to, you know, like having more meetings, going for coffee, reaching out. You'll you'll realize that like that is already all around you, right? And the cool thing about it is that like people like that want to connect, right? When you have like, I mean, this will sound foofish, but just you know, you think about good vibes, positive vibes, and and uh, building something of substance, right? Like don't like that attracts. You start having a conversation, like oh damn, like what? Like that's what you're into? Like this is what you're doing? Shit, like I'm doing this, right? Um, and new relationships are formed, and new bonds are formed, and like new new doors open. Um, but of course you have to face the fear of stepping out of that comfort zone and being, you know, getting away from being free from freedom. Um, you know, so that was one example in just the last kind of 10 days. Um, the other one was, I just got, you know, done, um, with a meeting. I literally walked up from a meeting of Andreas and my friend Marcus, um, who, you know, who just got, I, I would say, uh, a really, really amazing opportunity, uh, to go out, out to Atlanta and build a charter school. Uh, that's something, you know, I would say very new, the, the model and the concept that, that they're trying to build. And we've been working on, uh, on starting our own scholarship program here at Vigor Ground. And, uh, I'll kind of give you guys just a little bit of an insight that, you know, our own charity boot camps, we're going to change the, uh, the model a little bit. Like, you know, we donated to hundreds of charities, uh, many local, some national, but we're going to shift this a little bit because, I just have a, a huge desire to, to make a bigger impact and leave more of a legacy um, with youth and, and mentorship of youth um, that, you know, because like I was a knucklehead, I want to help kids like that get on the right path uh, or, or just open up that right path for them. And so with Marcus and Andres, we've kind of been discussing this for a while now. I mean, obviously it's, it's, it's quite a big project, um, but, you know, funding arts where our charity boot camps will fund our own organization that, uh, that opens up scholarships for mentoring uh, and it's, a, it's, you know, we could go deeper into what this whole program is going to be. Actually, I'll, I'll share it in an in a upcoming podcast, go deeper into that. Um, and, you know, that like th to be surrounded by those people where years ago I had this idea and then Marcus had this idea. And we started, you know, we started going to, to lunch and breakfast and having these conversations uh, and talking about it more and more and more and more. And it just kept getting closer and closer together to where now it's like we're actually, you know, the uh, building out the curriculum and for the nine weeks and so on and so forth and, you know, working to, to launch it really soon and then make this a program. Now, the thing is, if I'm not surrounded by those people, you know, that one, uh, are doing something of meaning, significance, purpose, and, you know, they're challenging me, I'm challenging them, I'm going like, hey, man, let's go do this, you know, and, and they're giving me some guidance and support in areas I don't know, none of this happens. And, uh, you know, so both from a standpoint of the, how much you enjoy the time with those people, you know, those, do those people uplift you? Like when you're, you know, when you're done with being around them, do you, are, are you, you know, crying? Like, you know, I'm all, we always joke around and me, Jay and Sandy, like, uh, you know, when we're around each other, like probably about 72% of the time, we're either laughing, smiling, you know, crying tears of joy <laughs> or, you know, or kind of, or, or discussing like possibilities or, you know, business or, or, or stuff like that. Right. Are like when you're done with those conversations and, and those meetings, like, are you uplifted? Whether it's just joy, you're happy. Are you challenged? Maybe, hey, maybe you're uncomfortable, but you're challenged to be better. Think about that. Right. It doesn't necessarily need to be comfortable and all goody goody feels. But like, is is the feeling that you have uncomfortable because this person is helping you? get out of your comfort zone, face some harsh realities, face the truth with my, which might be, you know, nasty and gritty and, and, you know, something you got to fucking change, but nonetheless, they're there to support you to do that. And they love you enough to, to actually challenge you to do that. So, you know, how are you coming out of these, these conversations? You know, are, are you talking about stuff like people, uh, you know, things, are you talking about events or are you talking about like, you know, possibilities and experiences and like creation, right? So I can't, like, even though this is like just one topic, I, I could give a shit. Like if, you know, if this was the one thing that you started working on today that were was associated with like, hey, you know what? I'm going to start like changing these environments of people around me. Now it's, it, it may sound harsh, right? It may sound harsh. Like, what, what are you saying, Luca? Like, does that mean like I get rid of my friends, this, that? Yeah. No, like, but man, it, it becomes, and maybe, maybe, Right. But if, but if, if none of that is like serving you, I, I would also say like, hey, how are you showing up? Right. Very few people talk about like, you know, the whole, 
uh, you are the, uh, the five friends or the five people you surround yourself the most. Well, let me ask you this question. Like, how are you showing up to that circle of five friends? Are you the person that's bringing the group down? Right? Like, that's another thing to think about too. Like, how do you show up in that, uh, in, in the environments that you come up, right? Are you the victim, right? Because that's toxic one way or another, right? Because you know how, you know how it is when somebody comes into the group and it's toxic, shuts down every idea, Everything is like, now we can't do this. No, can't do that. Oh, woe is me. Like, you know, that is draining, right? But also like being aware of like, hey, are you showing up to areas and being that person because of whatever is going on in your life? Maybe you're going through some hard stuff, right? But that's still a choice. And like that, we're going to move into that into, into, in one second. But I want to finish this, this point, okay? One is like, who do you surround yourself with? How do they affect you? And then also like, you know, how do you affect these groups that you're you're surrounded by? Are you the person that's showing up that's always shutting other people's ideas down? That is, uh, you know, being the uh, negative Nancy, is being the victim, that's being the woe was me, that's being the person that's, you know, uh, coming from a perspective that life is happening to them and you're not, you know, creating life, right? Or, or that life is happening through you. And it, this is, you know, I mean, think about it. Majority of the, 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 the joy that we have in our lives is, is comes from either, you know, becoming better, right? So that intrinsic motivation, growth, personal growth, it's, it's experiences, it's people, right? It's being around others and doing meaningful, meaningful things, right? So, so if, if that's the case, like, why wouldn't you, I would say, uh, assess that, change that because so much of it, it is in your control. And, you know, you might be like, well, but like I work with these people, I can't just not like not be around them. Well, you can choose. You can choose how you show up. You can also choose how much time you spend around them. Like, you know, if it's not mandatory, you can still make that choice. You can certainly make a choice in the, to, to determine like if you want to find some new people that maybe support your goals more. That's completely on you, which, which brings me to something called spheres of control. Now, you might have heard of this before. Um, and imagine that like, there's kind of like three levels of this and uh, we draw circles. We, we, we use it with, uh, with clients. And so you have a smaller circle, right? And in that circle, imagine like writing right at the top of it, just going total control. Like you have complete total control of the things in that circle. Um, a, a circle that's a little bit bigger on the outside of that, or think they're like more like oval circles uh, is you got some control. And the biggest th circle was like, whoosh, right? Is that, that circling the, the other two is like no control. I mean, you can do charts, you can do whatever. I, like this is just seems because like I said, the, the concept in, in psychology is called uh, spheres of control. And, you know, one of the drills that like I would actually want you to do is, you know, it is to write in the circles. And like I said, you could write it underneath, right? And just, and just put it kind of like in, uh, in columns is, you know, what in your life do you have control over, right? And literally write out all those things in life that you have control over. What do you believe that you have control over, okay? Second, you know, what do you have some control over, right? So that second circle, like, hey, what, what in life do you believe you have some control over? And what in life do you have no control over, right? So I write those things out, like take, you know, legitimately, Pause this podcast, like take three minutes, take four or five minutes, however long you need to write that out. I purposely paused it, obviously, because that's a moment. Write that stuff out. Now, from there, I want you to, you know, once you've done that, like think about it, like I want you to review that, right? I want you to re review the diagram and test your evidence for each one. Okay, test your evidence for each one. So, you know, for example, are you absolutely sure that you have certain, you have zero control over certain things? None. You have no control. How do you know for sure? Like, what is, what is, what is the, I would say, the evidence you know for sure that you have zero control over things? Okay. I want you to question it. And sometimes it may be like, well, you know, I have no control, like I have no control over, you know, how this person responds. Uh, you know, and I'd argue that maybe it was like, well, 
do you believe that maybe if you came to this conversation in a different way and studied a little bit of communication and how you can approach it in a non-threatening way, that maybe you they would respond differently and then you have some control, right? You don't have complete control, but maybe you have some control there. So first of all, I want you to like review it, right? Test your evidence and maybe suspend disbelief and like, you know, question some of those beliefs that you have, right? And the other part is like, hey, are you absolutely sure that you have total control over certain things? And how do you know that for sure, right? Because sometimes, you know, believing that you have complete control is what creates the anxiety, is what creates the pressure. So make sure that each item holds up under critical scrutiny. That, you know, reality is like, we don't usually check that shit. Like you don't stop and go that. You just go like, oh man, I don't have, I have no control over that. You know, I mean, obviously like in fitness and in health, a lot of times, you know, that belief is like, man, I, I don't have control over my genetics. Not true. Now we know the science of epigenetics, environmental genetics, nutrient genetics, meaning, you know, what we do, how we behave, the foods that we eat, how we sleep, those all either turn, you know, horm uh, I would say DNA on and off. Right. And and so obviously we have some control there quite a bit. Right. And so you got to test that. You got to test those beliefs. And so then look at the circle and see where you've allocated everything. Right. Highlight the, the items in under, you know, total control. Start there. You are the boss of those things. Right. And then for the next few weeks, focus on making deliberate choices that reflect reality. Control what you can actually control. So like if we have a conversation and you're like, hey, Luca, these are these things that I have, you know, under total control. Okay. I, you know, and you say it out loud and then we look at your days and it's like, okay, cool. Do you have total control over who you go and spend time with? Yeah, I have total control over that. Okay, great. You just shared with me that like these people or these places are negative. Like they're, they're, you're not getting any benefit from them. It's not uplifting. You're not learning anything. It's not challenging to be better. You're not enjoying yourself as much. What is the next step going to be? Like, how are you going to make deliberate choices to change that? Um, well, you know what, Luca, instead of going out here for drinks, uh, you know, waking up later the next day, feeling bad, bad like overeating, uh, I'm actually going to go for a workout with my friend. I'm going to go for a hike with my friend. I'm going to go, right? Example, just an example, right? But the things you have total control over Hey, for the next few weeks, focus on making deliberate choices that reflect that reality, the reality that you have total control of it, right? Control what you can actually control. Then, you know, go to the second circle. Hey, think about the things uh, that are under some control. So ask yourself, what could bring them into total control? Is there something that could bring that some control into total control sphere, right? What puts them out of the no control sphere? When and how could you control these items? And do you need to control them? For now, just, just think about it, right? Just think about it. Remember, awareness precedes change. An assessment precedes awareness. What we're doing right now, we're creating an assessment so you become aware of what you, your beliefs are around what you can control, what you can't control, what you can somewhat control. So that second circle, well, under some control, just think about like what, what takes it out of, no, what could take it to you know, complete control uh, what makes you think that you even have control and like, you know, do you need it? Right. And then for, 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 you know, number three circle, like, honestly, like let go of those things for real. Like if you cannot control them, let go of them. All you can do is manage and dynamically respond to these. And what does that mean? Like meaning that like when they happen, cause you have no control of them, right. You can manage what happens and you can dynamically respond. Meaning like, you know, we've talked about this before. We've talked about, uh, I would say, uh, positive focus, right? The drill positive focus that I love to do. Uh, I've done for a long time, but meaning, you know, what happened, you know, how is that positive, right? Or, you know, what is this teaching me? Okay, so think about that because that, that's what it means to manage and dynamically respond to them. You know, using whatever behaviors and other factors that you can control, so release your grasp on the things that you can't control. So notice what I said there, right? To manage and dynamically respond using whatever behaviors and other factors that you can control, meaning you can control, you know, your focus, you can control your mind, like you can control your perspective, 
right? You can control like what you can do. So with that said, even though something that's out of your control happens, like you can manage and dynamically respond in a way that's going to be beneficial. Meaning like, hey, maybe it's a shitty thing that happened. But if you learn something from it, right? And from that lesson, you apply it back to life and you build something. So for instance, uh, you know, you build a, it's like a, you have an injury, right? An injury happens. I mean, shit, like, you know, right off the top of the bat, of course, everybody's like, well, what's what's great about breaking your leg, right? And you got, well, it's nothing, right? But at the same time, hey, when you're breaking a leg, one, you can always go like, you know what? I'm going to learn from this. I'm going to come back even stronger. Here's the things that I can do. I can train my upper body. You know, core has been my weakness. So I need to train my core. I haven't done any single leg work. Well, you know what? I'm going to train the other single leg, which has 20% of nervous system synergy across to the other leg. You know what, man, there's this, there's this article that I've been wanting to write for a long time and all these systems that I need to work on in business. And now we'll actually have more time to focus my energy on that. Right? Like, I mean, there's so many different ways that you can do that. Okay. There's so many lessons or, or different shift in focus that can benefit you. But once again, like, you know, those are things that like, well, you can't control that anymore. Right? So think about that how that works, but like you do have to write this stuff out because the reason why I wanted to go into spheres of control is because you can control so much more of your environment as far as who's surrounding you than you think. Now, how did I, I start? Well, guess what? Like I started going to every seminar workshop that I could, I mean, like, hey, who, you know, who's the person in this field that I, I, I look up to and like, they're, you know, they're the best and I want to learn from them. Bam, like that's, okay, cool, I'm going to that seminar. And people will be like, well, I don't have money for that. Well, shit, I put it on a credit card. Like, you know, or I hustled extra, or I, you know, I was training in my apartment building, stacking all that money on the side just for seminars, just for education. Okay, once again, I'm looking at what I can control. So I would surround myself by those people. And guess what? I'd meet other people at these events that were trying to get better. Okay, same thing as like, you know, think about like men mentorship program, masterminds. Think about areas where people are helping so philanthropy, you know, feeding the homeless, going to uh, Habitats for Humanity and the hundreds of other organizations that do good in the world. When you show up there, these people are out there to help and give. And let's not judge why that reason is. But hey, you know what? You're connecting with other like minded individual that maybe in that area is going to help you grow. Right. And challenge you maybe how to do more. That was, you know, having this conversation, you know, me and Andres actually uh, started building our relationship, not just from him coming through to the gym um, you know, after an ACL tear and me helping him rehab that and, and get in better shape. But it was our connection. We started, you know, talking about, uh, you know, how he opened an orphanage in Mexico uh, that they, you know, they fully fund themselves and have an incredible program. They're opening another one. And I was, you know, he used to play basketball. So I was like, man, tell me more about that. Like, hey, we're doing all this charity work. I'm so like fired up about this charity work. And like that bonded us because, you know, and like over the years now, we've been kind of constantly working on, I mean, he was one of the people that, uh, gave the idea for our community dinners, uh, you know, now been doing community dinners three to four day, uh, four times a year where we open them up and we feed the homeless and people in need, um, you know, and it's just become a bigger thing. And like the clients come in, all the coaches come in, you know, we have a blast. We sit there with the people, we feed them. Um, it's just, it's just good, good environment. And like we've kept kind of, I would say building this to where now we're working on this project that I think is a legacy project and something that, you know, we'll all be proud of. And it's a lot of work, but you know what? Like, guess what? It all came from putting myself uh, in, in, in the situation to be around that, those types of people. You have control of that way more than you think, way more than you think. And like I said, I wanted you to fill out those spheres of control because it created awareness of the fact that, yes, you can, you do, you do have a choice, right? And it, everything starts with awareness, right? And we, we talked about those four squares about, unconscious incompetence, right? Like you don't know what you don't know. Cool. Maybe I brought something to your awareness right now. And now you're in the, in that box of conscious uh, incompetence. Like, sure. Like, may, Hey, you're not great in those areas. Maybe you need to shift your environments. Um, you haven't yet, but at least you're conscious about them. You're like, man, like you'll start recognizing like, damn, like I'm around these people. And like, they're just like, no matter what I do, it's like, they're always bringing me down. Like the, the, I'm, they're rubbing off on me and I'm making the, I'm doing these micro behaviors that aren't benefiting me. Right. And the next step is to go to conscious competence. It's like where you're working really hard to make deliberate behavior changes or be around different people that support you uh, in, in some way or another. 
And then, you know, over time, you kind of get into this like unconscious competence where, man, like that's just, you're, you're having positive habits that you just do. Like it's just who you become. It's just who you are, right? With that said, like I said, I said it was going to be shorter. I kind of feel was, was was decently short, but the goal is that like when I do one of these, there, there really is this powerful point to it. Um, and it's something that if you if you apply into your life, you know, six months from now, notice I don't say like just eight weeks from now, even though like you can have a huge shift really fast if you take action on these things. But hey, you know what? If you keep changing those micro behaviors and you keep becoming more aware and you keep making more deliberate choices in those areas, like six months from now, years from now, man, like you like legit, your, your path to where you want you're going is going to be very, very, very different than what it is right now. OK, and, and notice like that I've mentioned in multiple podcasts, I said, hey, you know, where you are, point A and point, you know, where you want to go, point B. There is a like a drawbridge almost in between or, is the, you know, there's a cliff, there's a gap and you got to build this bridge across. And that bridge is built off not only knowledge, you know, things you don't know that are going to help you, you know, the skill sets or the mindsets. A lot of it is also the people, the resources, but people are huge. Environments are huge. And so once again, like you can start building that bridge to where you want to be, be surrounding yourself by those people. With that said, Take action. Nothing matters. Like, you know what I mean? All this stuff is 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 uh, good and dandy, and maybe you can regurgitate it to somebody, but it really doesn't matter if you don't do something about it. So what's one actionable step that you're going to do today or this week? Um, but you know what? Fuck it. Not even this week. Today. What are you going to do today to start shifting the environment of the people you surround yourself with that support you and go in the direction that you want to go? What's that going to be? Write it down. Put in your, you know, maybe reach out to somebody right now by text. Give them a call. Set up a coffee. Maybe you've already had somebody in mind, right? Maybe, hey, you know what? Maybe have a conversation and say, hey, look, I, I have to, I love you. I have to distance myself from you for a little bit. I, I got all these goals that I'm working on. And like, you know, this is this is something that's not benefiting me, moving me where I want to. Hey, if you want to, you know, if, if you want to eventually tag along for a ride in the direction I'm going, hey, that's on you. But do, what, do something, do something significant that's going to turn the direction of where you're going, okay? Because then, you know what? Then you're actually moving that dial of of your life you're moving the direction of you know the path that you're going into and even even if it's a couple of feet you know what it's still a shift with that said as always guys look I'm, i really love and appreciate uh every single one of you and i appreciate when you guys go give a review if you haven't given a review on itunes yet please go and do that um like i said it, it really helps spread the word it really gets uh more people to listen to it and if more people listen to it make a change you know what we can all kind of i would say elevate our consciousness do better in the world, do more of what we love doing and help others. And, uh, and, and that makes a difference, man. So go, go leave a review. And I really thank you and appreciate you for that. With that said, I will see you in the next Vigor Life podcast episode. Coach Lucas out. Peace.